Hi guys, and welcome to another Maths Guru video. My name's Darren, and I am apparently the Maths Guru. What are we dealing with today? Yes, we are dealing with the excitement that is um, dividing quantities into a given ratio. Yes, yes, yes. Now, this is part of the general maths course, and it is the foundational stuff, the stuff that's going to be used to build on later on. So it's really important you watch these videos. You may find them simple. That's okay. It means you're going to smash the rest of this course. Um, head over to my uh, YouTube channel if you could, and uh, subscribe. I'm never going to be rich. I'm never going to be famous, but it will be good to know that people are actually watching these rather than the eight people I think I'm up to at this moment in time. Leave a comment to let me know what you thought of the video and what I could do better. But, uh, and give me a shout out to your mates, yeah? Just, I'm here to provide videos, and I promise you, I think they're pretty good. But then I would say that because I'm sort of doing them. Okay, so, as I say here to recap, these are all foundational videos, and what they will need to do is build on. And what I'm going to do here is build on a ratio. We've been looking at ratios and the idea of expressing um, numbers just to compare quantities. That's really what a ratio is, a way to compare. And as I say here, in a year 10 class of 26 students, now the number of students is actually really, really important. Later on, it's going to come up critically important in later videos. There are 14 girls and 12 boys. Now, what do you notice? 14 girls, 12 boys, add to make 26. Now, you're going to turn around and say, if that's the level of this video, I'm stopping now and I'm moving on. No, chill, hold on, I'm telling you now it's important. It's going to get there because we're going to reverse the process in a moment. And then what we did is we could now express the ratio of girls to boys. And again, remember, the order of that is important girls colon boys so what do we say there were 14 girls and there were 12 boys now again a video i've just done says that we can cancel these things down yeah because a ratio must always express in its simplest form lovely what what goes into 14 and 12 two lovely so if i now divide both sides by two and we have to do both sides by the same number to keep it equivalent then we find uh, we have a ratio of seven to six hooray Life goes on, the examiner's happy, I'm happy, everybody happy, happy, happy. But mm, are we happy, happy, happy? Probably not. Because what I want to say to you now is if I take this ratio and add it together, what do I get? Well, if I now do seven plus six, I get 13. Well, I didn't have 13 students in my lesson, so what I'm starting to lose by having that ratio is not really an idea of how many students I had in the room I started with or a quantity I was beginning with. And so we need to try and reverse it. Hopefully you'll see how we reverse it by that little bit, right? So again, reversing stuff in maths, we have to be able to do stuff forwards as well as backwards. And so if I said to you now, I had a ratio of seven to six, and again, we'll just do girls to boys. What I want to know is for example, um, how many people are in the room? Um, well, I could turn around and say, well, in fact, there are seven to six, which I would I just say 13 people in the room, but there aren't. There aren't 13 people in the room. There are actually 26 people in the room because the question says I've got 26 people in the room. So if I've got 26 people in the room, how do I go from this 13 to this 26? How do I go from 13 to 26? Hold on a moment, I times by two. And because I've got twice as many people as my ratio is suggesting, then all I need to do is multiply each of these numbers by two, and I get 14 dot dot 12, and lo and behold, that adds up to 26. And I now know that I've got 14 girls and 12 boys. Are you beginning to see what we do here? Yeah? Now again, another video I talked about defrauding my sister. I feel so bad. Yeah, so when my nan was there, <laughs> she gave us the money. We each had a coin, but uh, I was getting the two pence pieces or the two penny pieces, and she was getting the one penny piece. Mm, very different, but I was obviously a lot, lot richer. And so in that situation there, as I say, I was splitting the money in a ratio of one to two. So here's the question. Every time I take or I was splitting that money, how much did I have in my hand at the time? Well, I had a one penny piece and a two penny piece, which meant I had three pence, i.e. I just added those together. So I've got three pence every time I'm splitting this money up. But now the question goes on to say, well, if I had 30 pence in the purse, how much am I getting and how much is my sister getting? Well, I now want to see how do I go from the three pence that I've got to the 30 pence I'm trying to separate out. Oh, well, three to 30. I times by 10, or I'm gonna put my hand in that purse 10 times, over and over and over and over again. Well, if I'm gonna do it 10 times, 
that means that my sister will get 10 times 1 pence and I will get 10 times 2 pence. So she'll get 10 pence and I'll get 20 pence. And what do you notice when they add together? They give me the 30 pence I need. Oh, okie dokie. So the rules behind doing this are this. One, add the ratios together. So do you remember I had the one pence and the two pence and I added those together, which gave me three pence. That's telling me how much I have in any one sort of quantity or any one hand in my purse or whatever it is I'm trying to do. Then it says divide the total amount by the sum of the ratios. Now, that's just a different way of saying, I knew I had 30 pence to try and get rid of, and I divided it by this value here, which was three, which gave me 10. Now again, that's not how I did it in the example. Why? Because I just knew that when I went from three and I times it by 10, I got 30. Doesn't matter how you do it. You can take your final amount, the amount you have, and divide it by the sum of the ratios, you'll get the same value. And then as I say here, because this is my multiplier, because that's how many times I'm taking the money out of the purse, then I need to times each of these numbers by that 10, which gave me 10 to 20. Now my ratio is still the same. All right, I haven't changed the ratio, it's still the same size, but I now have a way of saying, well, hold on a moment, my sister got 10 pence and I got 20 pence and a lifetime in hell. Oh my God, I feel bad. Anyway. So, how do we apply this? I've got a number of questions just to show you again and again and again. And of course, watching me do it is great, but there are hopefully questions that you can practice on as well. So here we go. Calculate the number of students in each class if 60 students are divided in the following ratio. So, we have 60 students. That's my total amount. And I've got the rules written down here to help us do this. So, first things first, I've got the ratio of 1 to 3. What's the first thing we do? We add them together. All right, so 1 plus 3 gives me 4. All right, now in this situation, I'm trying to go from four to 60. I'm trying to find what my multiplier is. That's not necessarily the easiest thing to do in my head. So I may just do 60 divided by four, which gives me one and 15, all right? So my multiplier is 15. That means I'm gonna now take each of those values for my ratio and multiply it by 15. Why? Well, again, it's like me having one penny, or so my sister having one pence and me having three pence, and I'm gonna do it 15 times so that we've divvied up that 60 cents or whatever else. So times by 15. So one times 15, three times 15, gives me a 15 colon 45. Now, the way we check is when I add those together, do they make 60? I should cocoa. So that now means my class is gonna be separated as 15 somethings, and 45 something. So it may be boys and girls or blondes to dark haired students or people who are watching my video still and people who switch off. <laughs> okay, that's example one. What about this one, five to one? Again, we can write the ratios any way we like so long as if they give us the order in the question, we keep the order the same. So five to one, what's the first rule? Add them together. Well, five plus one is six, marvelous. So I've got six pence every time I put my hand in the bag. I've got 60 students, so I'm trying to work out how do I go from six to 60 using a multiplier? Well, that seems relatively easy. Hopefully I can do that in my head. I can times by 10. But again, if not, you can take your final amount, divide it by the sum, and that will give you your multiplier. So again, I'm gonna do my arrows to say that's times by 10, and that's times by 10. Five times 10 is 50. Colon, six, uh, one times 10 is 10. Do they add to make 60? They do indeed, and so now I've got 50 to 10, all right? So my group of 60 students have now been split as 50 and 10. Hold on a minute, there's now three ratios. <laughs> Same, doesn't matter, all right? We could end up with red, green, and blue. We're trying to split something up into those people who are in a red house, a green house, and a blue house. Doesn't actually matter. The rules stay the same. If I have one to two to seven, one plus two plus seven just happens to be 10. Well, there's a nice number that we can use. Oh. I'm trying to work out from how to get from 10 to 60. Again, take the final amount, divide it by the initial amount, and gives me a multiplier of six. So what I'm now gonna do is multiply each of these numbers by six. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. So one times six is six, two times six is 12, seven times six is 42, and the question is when I add those all together, do I get 60? Well, I should Coco I do. And that's basically the hardest part of this lesson. <laughs> I'm pretty much done. 
Yeah, I love ratios. Ratios are awesome and hopefully you have now understood them as well. The best thing to do is write notes in a summary book. Notes are downloadable from mathsguru.com. If you haven't already been over there, sign up for me, please. Um, you get access to the videos, they're in textbook order with notes and more coming soon. Exam questions, the whole works. Uh, also head over to my uh, YouTube channel and subscribe, which would be greatly appreciated. Never gonna be rich, never gonna be famous, but I am then gonna know that you are watching. Leave a comment below and spread the word. Okay, I'm done. Hopefully you are staying safe. Yes, it's still COVID while I'm doing this stuff, but we're just coming out of another lockdown. I'll see you next time. My name is Darren Masguru. Take care.